Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Learn Live session. So my name is Cynthia Zanoni, and uh, I'm a cloud advocate here at Microsoft. And with me, I have my friend, uh, Rene. Hello, Rene. How are you? Hello, everybody. I'm Renee Noble. I'm also a cloud advocate here at Microsoft, joining you from Sydney, Australia today. Yes, great. So, oh, also, I'm based in Sao Paulo, Brazil, so it means we are just connecting across the globe to be here with our yeah. community at Ignite. And uh, also, oh, Ignite is almost coming to an end today. So we learned a lot. So about many great things about uh, AI, our, its security, especially in development, low code, and many other stuff. So I believe for me, uh, the main message about uh, Ignite this year uh, is about how we can leverage artificial intelligence to build more. And uh, especially uh, in this session, we are going to explore more about GitHub Copilot to create uh, a mini game, you know, to have uh, some fun and also understand how the Copilot world is working in the development environment, right, Rene? Absolutely. It's definitely a very co-pilot heavy, let's call it a co-pilot party. Uh, so it's been very exciting to be a part of it. And I think this is a great way to come to, you know, getting closer to the end of Ignite to celebrate and get our hands into co-pilot and make something fun, as you said, with co-pilot. So yeah, we're so excited to have you here today to do this with us. Do jump in the chat. You can get your questions in there. There's also a couple of threads that you can jump in already to say hello in. And also there's some helpful links that we'll be posting throughout that you can jump onto to utilize all the stuff that we're posting about. So yeah, uh, that's very exciting. And we also have our lovely moderators in the chat as well. Uh, so we've got Tanya Strom, Visky, sorry, I hope I haven't butchered your name, and Hamadi Revi, uh, who are in the chat. Uh, this is a girl powered team today here doing some co pilot with you. So it's going to be very exciting. Uh, so jump in, and our lovely moderators will be there to answer your questions. And yeah, pop them through to us, and we'll get a chance to answer a few of your questions live on air throughout the show. Yes, thank you, and welcome to our moderators. And for everyone here connecting with us today, or maybe later to get, catch up the recording. So in our Learn Live session, we are going to learn how to create a mini game using Python and Copilot. And uh, I know sometimes when we hear about a programming language where we don't know too much, so, but here, don't worry, no matter what skill level you have around Python or web development, because together we are going to explore the tools, in this case, uh, Codespace and Copilot, to come together and create a solution to our challenge. And uh, in other words, so let's take a look uh, in the learning goals we have today. The first one, of course, is going to create our, our mini game, but uh, especially being familiar with Codespace and Copilot, because especially now we are having, you know, so much um, announcements, not only here at Microsoft, but at the globe, everyone today is looking to improve the developer productivity, you know, putting more artificial intelligence or thinking, you know, how especially GitHub can be more close for each developer across the world. So it's very important for us to keep, you know, with a open mind to be uh, here learning with us. And in other words, considering if you are coming from, I don't know, Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, or any other language, uh, this challenge project is a great opportunity for you to, you know, to practice your coding skills, understand especially about, you know, the logic and how we can communicate with AI to make AR or co-pilot supporting us and not, you know, putting the AI as a pilot because uh, artificial intelligence just happened and exists because we have all incredible women. So to talking, you know, to say the directions and how everything should be working. And this is uh, the goal of our session, you know, to create a game, but also understand how we can connect the artificial intelligence in our daily basis as a developers. 
Amazing. So yeah, we've got extra resources for you as well. Uh, definitely have a look at this link or this QR code uh, if you want to learn a bit more. As Cynthia is saying, we've got all these resources available to us with AI, with Copilot and all different things. And Cynthia, myself and all the rest of the cloud advocates at Microsoft are putting out different learning opportunities all the time. So this is a way to uh, open the door to more learning opportunities. Whether you're a pro at Python or you're coming across from another language um, using Copilot, it's a great opportunity. Uh, just to see how Copilot can help you be a better developer. It really is like, like your body sitting off to the side. So we've got on uh, our extra resources page, we've got a link to a cloud skills challenge that goes with this module. We've also got another link that uh, to a the GitHub Universe cloud skills challenge, which uh, Cynthia has been involved with putting together with GitHub Universe just wrapping up last week. Um, and we've got links to other programs for students, educators, pro devs, and founders that you can check out. There's a lot of great stuff you can get for free, get access to all on that page. And if you miss part of this session or you want to share it with someone else, this video will be put on the blog once it's available online on demand. So check it out. Um, this, this link will be back later on the show if you missed it now. And it's also in the helpful links chat. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much, Renee. And also, just before we go, so I want to reinforce the invitation for all of you to participate in the GitHub uh, Universe Cloud Skills Challenge. Uh, and especially this uh, challenge project today is part of the learning path we created, you know, to help people to introduce in terms of uh, virtual control, GitHub, how to get started with code space and Copilot. And also we have some additional free trainings from Microsoft to help you to understand how to create a Python API using Fast API and how to create a portfolio website using React and of course having GitHub Copilot to help us. And also you have, you know, I think about eight free trainings where uh, you can just download, you know, the achievements like a certificate of participation in the training. And as we are doing this GitHub Cloud Skills Challenge in partnership with the Copilot and the GitHub team, we are going to offer for everyone who finish all the eight trainings a special bet from GitHub to share on social media. You know, because today uh, it's so important, uh, Hene, to have like a certificate or a badge to show how we are learning, you know, because this is a very important, especially uh, in the job market today where everyone needs to be involved and to keep, you know, uh, learning all the new things we have in the market. So why not start with official trainings from Microsoft and have a badge from GitHub in your LinkedIn to show for your employees and maybe, you know, look around for a promotion or any new opportunities for your career. So I think this is very amazing. I'm still learning and doing the training. So I hope to see everyone joining uh, with us to learn more. And OK, let's go to our session today. So can I keep can you share uh, a little bit about, you know, the goals and how we are going to do today? Absolutely. So today we're going to be using Copilot. So we're going to firstly be setting up our code spaces. I'll tell you a little bit more about code spaces if you haven't heard about that in a minute. We're going to get, get that set up, get it set up with Copilot, and then we're going to be working on our rock, paper, scissors, scissors, paper, rock, whatever you call your <laughs> game in your country. The order always changes, um, but hopefully this is a game that's familiar to you. But if it, if you need a little memory jog, I think me and Cynthia are just going to play a little bit of a game now uh, to see how this works. So you ready, Cynthia? Yes, I think we can do like a, a real world game yeah. here. So let's go. Absolutely. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yes, one, two, three. Yes. Uh, <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. On that one, one. one more time, one more time for one me. Time. One, two, one, three. Two, three. <laughs> Oh, and again. Yeah. Oh, my God. Really yeah. I, I'm not so lucky case. today, but uh, yes, everyone knows, but especially this game. So I think I have a great um, personal history because this is my nephew just coming to be with me uh, during his vacation in the summer. And uh, one day we have totally no internet and no energy. And he was just like exploding to say, oh, my goodness how we can survive here because we don't have uh, internet we we can't play anything on xbox and he's just 10 so 
why you know all the internet will change everything in his life but uh when i start you know to look for around some uh classic uh games etc and we started to play this and now he is just passionate all the time we do on you know message or on everything to see who we were but of course i'm still don't have it so look because i keep here the, the you know you you uh, earn the, the competition here but let's leverage copilot to create our, our game so let's go um to talk uh, a little bit about the the preparation right because we have some stuff that uh, uh we need to do before we go to the coding uh experience uh and considering you know that the game we are going to do today uh is not a, a multiplayer online but uh, we are going to just uh, use Visual Studio Code inside uh, Code Space, and also we are going to interact with, with the game uh, using that terminal inside our uh, Visual Studio Code. And as we are going to work with uh, Code Space, Copilot, and everything in the cloud, uh, we just needed three main pieces here uh, to start coding our game. The first one is the GitHub account. So a GitHub account is free for everyone. Of course, GitHub offers some uh, possibilities for enterprise uh, developers, etc. But if you are just a developer looking to learn something new, please go there and create your free account at GitHub com so it's free you can leverage lots of stuff and especially code space is available for every developer uh who are really have a, a github account and um we have a, a great i think possibility because code space offer uh 60 hours free per month so this means like almost 100 hours during the month you can be coding and delivering everything you can at the github platform and uh you don't need to pay any extra dollars to have this of course if you i don't know are working for the company and you have um you need much more hours to be coding you can explore the, the possibilities in terms of subscriptions but you can start for free and deliver it to all your projects from the universities or your, you know, Robbie's project. So I think this is a very great opportunity because not only about the, the free uh, service, but thinking about how code space can help you to save time because everything will be in the cloud. You don't need to install anything in your computer. Thinking about, you know, very complex architectures in terms of, you know, creating maybe a Docker image or, or, or anything else where you need to install a lot of stuff in your computer you don't need to make this you can use copilot copilot with code space of course having the developer environment and you can uh, do everything in the cloud without you no know, any installation and of course the, the last two but not least but is a github uh cloud copilot uh github copilot today we have a um a 30 days uh free trial where you know you can start uh to build stuff and you know understand the um, the platform but also we have a more possibilities for uh, everyone you know who is looking for a copilot account right when yeah absolutely so if you are a student or educator anyone with a uh, email address that contains .edu, uh, you can quickly get access to your uh, free student developer account or your developer pack for GitHub, and that will include GitHub Copilot. It will also include some bonus hours for code spaces uh, usage as yeah. well, which is really handy. Uh, for our open source maintainers as well, you may have already qualified for GitHub Copilot for free as well, just because we want to make sure people who are giving to the community for free are getting GitHub Copilot Pilot for free. So if you are eligible for that, you can check that out in your subscriptions and it will already be there for you. Uh, so you can start using that for our open source maintainers. And if you don't fit into those categories, but want to give it a go, see what all the hype is about, which is it's pretty magical, I'm going to say, and you'll see that in this uh, in this session here, uh, try that 30 day free trial as well. 
Yes, I think it's good. And also the, the price for the subscription uh, is a really cheap in terms if you think, oh, will be uh, a two coffees per month there. You are not going to say, oh, I'm going to, you know, a, co a coffee shop, etc. But you can uh, invest on Copilot because the, the, you will see, uh, but the platform is just amazing and it can help you, you know, to um, to learn more fast and under, especially understand how you can maybe uh, move from one technology to other, especially me as I'm coding for a long time. And we, uh, I think when we are really have a, you know, connection with a very old technology, we just uh, remember the name of legacy technology when we have things very old and we need, you know, to put uh, with a, a new platform, especially when we think about, you know, web development where we have, you know, lots of uh, new frameworks and libraries here to, to help uh, but let's go there so we are really talk uh, a little bit about the tools and to create our mini game we are going to have uh, a three main steps the first one is to create uh, our code space on github and also we have um, a code space template available for everyone you just need you know to go in the microsoft learning module from this session and then uh, start your exercise and fork the github repo with the template and also, uh, we are going to understand how to include the GitHub Copilot extension, leveraging one uh, file called uh, devcontainer.json, which means like uh, a very um, important file in the configuration of the, the code space. But uh, Rene will uh, talk a little bit more about this uh, pretty soon. And at the end, of course, we need to create the logic for our game to understand, you know, oh, what will happen if you know a player just discovered that uh, we'll put, I don't know, a, a rock, a scissor or a paper. So we are going to code uh, everything with you. So, Hene, please, can you tell us a little bit about uh, code space and how it's uh, working? Absolutely. So we're going to get to the demo as soon as we can, but a quick spiel about what code spaces is so we know what we're getting ourselves into. Uh, we're going to get ourselves into a containerized dev environment that runs in the cloud. Uh, so basically, you can just go into GitHub, into the repo that we've got given you to fork, fork that repo, and then you'll be able to hit the button that's just to uh get started with code spaces. And this is going to create a dev container that you can run your code in. So you can write your code in VS Code from GitHub. And then it's just going to, when you hit run, it's going to be running it in the cloud. So then you don't have to have all the stuff set up on your machine. You don't have to install everything locally. So it's super easy. It's a really great, uh, great thing to, if you want to, you're doing university team projects or working in industry as a team to have this containerized environment that you can just grab and you're going to have to always be setting up your own environment. When I remember starting in the industry, that was the trickiest part to get going with. So Code Spaces is a real game changer. Um, and we're going to have a little demo of just how we set it up. It does take a few minutes to get started. So we've pre-recorded this just to speed up the little waiting bit times. But let's take a look at how it happens. Great. So let's Please. move on. On to creating our code space and adding the GitHub extension. So uh, I think you have to hit run on this one for us, Cynthia. There we go. OK, so we've got the repo here. We've forked it, and I'm just putting it into my organization, and I'm giving it my own name that I want to give it. Then we're going to create that fork, and it's going to spin up the fork for us, creating, giving us all the files from this thing, um, from our repo, but also the dev container as well. So it's going to have the image that we want to work with for this one. And I'm just going to click Create Code Space on Main. And it's going to create one with the dev container that we've been given. And all we have to do to add the Copilot extension is jump into the dev container.json file. And then that will have a bunch of stuff already in there. It contains the image at the top we can see. Uh, but with that, we just want to add to is just here in the extensions section. So we want to add the GitHub Copilot extension there. So we're just going to add to this list. Uh, github.copilot, make sure you get the capitalization right. Uh, and then uh, it's just doing a little quick commit here because that way it will be here when I come back to it next time. Um, and you could also you know, add this to your whole team's environment. And we just need to rebuild that container now that it's in there. Uh, you don't have to do the commit for your own purposes uh, right now. 
just uh, handy, but you do need to rebuild it so the container is live with the GitHub Copilot extension. That's in there. And all we have to do now is jump over to the app.py file where we'll be coding our game. And we're ready to get started with coding in just a minute. Yeah, it's great. So thank you so much, uh, Renee, for sharing for, with us. So let me just change uh, my screen here to yes. share the um, to share yeah. the code space uh, environment. So just give me one second. No also, worries. something that uh, I think is, is really interesting about uh, code space is that uh, uh, we can, you know, uh, start coding in the cloud, and also we can sync with our um, Visual Studio Code on the desktop. So I think this yes. is really great because if you have, uh, you know, any issue or or any time that oh I'm going to be without uh, internet. Or, or any stuff so you can sync there so just give me one second my screen uh is just worry. loading here while you do that i'll just talk a little bit about copilot for anyone who's not very familiar with copilot yet um you've obviously come here to learn a bit more about it maybe you know something but it is really it's like an assistant that's going to be helping us write our code whether we write a code comment and it's going to suggest the next line or while we're writing our code ourselves and it's going to suggest the end of it there's also a third feature that's coming out general going to be generally available soon i think it's the start of december which is the copilot chat feature where you don't have to be doing a specific part of your code you can be talking to the chat and it could refer to all of your code so that's coming in soon for everybody as well but oh, shall nice. we get started Yes, okay. let's get started here. So thinking in the in the possibility we have uh, today, Renee, where, you know, we are going to interact with our, our terminal here to make, you know, the, the beds and see, you know, who will play uh, each element. So you are uh, really working with Python. So why are you suggesting me to start to think how I can create like a, um, a competitor for me as a player, consider my game here will be, you know, only in my environment. Yeah, so I guess uh, Scissors Paper Rock, it's really a game of chance. So for our computer competitor, we're going to want it to just randomly choose in, like the Scissors Paper or Rock option. So something we can add is just the uh, random module in Python. Oh, so if we could nice. just ask Copilot for that, that'd be really handy. Um, and it can just make sure we get that syntax for adding it just right. So uh, yeah, let's you yeah. know, import the random module. Yes, let me ask you here for Copilot to help me. So, and I don't know if everyone uh, can see very clear my screen, but uh, basically uh, in the bottom, I have the icon of Copilot and it means that uh, the installation of the extension is uh, really working. And when I started to put, you know, to type uh, my comment here in the app, dot pi uh copilot will start to complement you know to out complete my comment and also when i just put there i uh, import the random module so uh copilot i really identify the you know the the specific library that i, I need to be working and complete and just put it here uh for me the the suggestion and of course if we are coding something different or you are expecting you know uh, a different function or, or anything you can just you know interact with Copana to put more information or more details, especially about your code and what you are expecting, right, Hene? Exactly. So you might have just seen pop up on the screen, import Flask and like, well, we're not making a web app today, Copilot. So we're not going to actually go with that instruction. But as we build yeah. more the f in, into the file, Copilot will have more of an idea what we want to do. And it's actually going to learn from the code that we write. So to get started, I think we might want to give it an idea of what we're doing. We might just say we want to have the options that we're going to be choosing from to scissors, paper, and rock in a list. So create yeah. a list. Yeah, of, let me put it here. Yeah. Create a list of options, options. Uh, that has uh, oh, rock, it, paper, scissors. Yes, copy a copy the radio. Uh, understand what we are doing today. So and create uh, an array for us with rock, paper, and scissor. So also look here. So <laughs> Copilot is really suggesting some stuff. Just let me uh, back here to say create a variable that will keep track the number of rain, loose and ties. So but here I think we can uh, maybe do something uh, a little bit different mm. just to say here uh, 
create a, a score a variable and set it with zero. So yeah. let me see here. Yes, Perfect. this score is here. Also, uh, we need like to create uh, a second variable here, uh, mm. just you know to connect the rounds the player are working. You know, so let me just put here uh, create a um, I don't know a score a player a, maybe. Uh, I, I don't know how we can describe yeah. here. Create a variable to count the number of rounds. Variable. I reckon if we just say that, I reckon it will probably just set it to zero in itself. Oh, so we can yes, find out. Here. There we go. Let's see Let's what it does. See here, yes, Perfect. and the round. So yes, it looks Excellent. good. So we That's already have great. uh both variables. And now uh I think maybe we can uh start to thinking about the, the interaction in your game because as uh we did in the beginning of the session, so uh this game is, is about trying, you know, and considering you know we are going to try something uh multiple times, we need uh, a loop here. So let me just start with uh a yeah. while loop here. So let me see if copilot will help me so perfect yes so we want to either yeah hopefully it will give us a while through it did uh, this for suggest to uh create uh a yes. loop that loops forever but we can just write while true as we said it's a co-pilot it's not going to do all the work for you so don't worry it's not going to replace your job but you do need to learn some code so it's still worth learning some python so you yes. know what's going on pilot is, is loading here and you're thinking about the the game so let's see if the suggestion coming here uh will work so or maybe let me put it here uh create oh sorry create a while loop that will round here. I think we don't need um, to put the, the limit that there. So yeah. let me just come here while true. OK, we already have the, the first you know section in the in the competition. And also now I think it is the time you know to capture the user you know uh, input. So Copilot is, is already thinking about the, the whole code, but I will just just uh, type here uh, the ask to start you know to give more uh, information for Copilot. So let me put here um, create uh, a variable. A variable. Um, let me see here that uh, it starts the user choice. So OK. Let's see here the suggestion. OK, Perfect. user choice. OK, we have a basically here uh, a very uh, native uh, function from uh, Python that basically will show the message for us in the in the console and then uh, get the value to put here in the user underscore uh, choice. And also now we need to uh, create a second variable here to uh, start, you know, the computer choice in this case. Uh, uh, this variable will access the random library here. We have a just, you know, import the library here in the beginning. Uh, and then a uh, computer, you know, will just, you know, random inside the list with the three uh, elements we have. And now what do we need to do right now, uh, Hene? Yeah, so we love how you, uh, the comment we wanted firstly for generating the computer's choice and then also created the computer's choice code as well. But now we have both of the computer and the player's choices. We need to compare those to find out what's going to happen. So we could, for instance, say uh, create the code for what happens when the player chooses scissors, for instance. Okay, let me put it here. If the users is the... Um user's uh, choice is, is um, rock. Rock, let's Maybe, do it. Yeah. Let's see here the connection. So let's okay. wait a little bit. There we go. Okay. Yeah, here we go. We have there. a lot of uh, options here. And basically, uh, Copilot, just let me reduce the zoom here to see, you know, the complete uh, snippet of code. So basically, Copilot is asking if the user uh, choice rock uh, and then create a comparison here with the computer potential uh, choice during the, the interaction. So I think it looks good. And for you, Rene? 
That's looking pretty good. We've got all of the desperate, like rock with rock, rock with papers, rock with scissors, and we've got the score incrementing. The only thing that I don't see here is the round incrementing. So outside of the um, if statement, after the last elif, could we add a comment that asks it to increment the round or the start of the code, the start of here? Yeah, the start seems good. Yeah. Um, to increment how many just... rounds we've had. Yes. Um, how can I put the comment here? Maybe uh, yeah. add, adding one uh, to the rounds variable. It already knows yes. what we want to do. Add the rounds. So let's see if we have some completion by one. I don't Beautiful. think this is the correct exactly the prompt, but uh, it will work but because basically out. we'll get you know the rounds variable and just put a plus one here. So, but of course it, we can create a better prompt here, but uh, this is what we need for now to yeah. to start. Also, uh, let's go to our uh, next uh, prompt where basically, yeah. uh, oh, Compiler is already reading, uh, saying there to check if the user will choose, you know, the paper. So let's wait a little bit. Here we okay. go. Okay, here we go. I, yeah, I love that it's already included the rounds, um, adding one to the number of rounds this time because it's just learned yeah. from what we wanted from the last one and it's added it to this one. So. We have all the same options that we had in the last one, but now for the paper version yeah. for the user, and we've included the rounds in, in uh, iteration as well. So that's looking good. Uh, yeah, I think it looks more. good. And uh, we can say that uh, AI is smart, you know, because the copilot is uh, really learning about our expectations. And of course, the third uh, option we have is about Caesar. So, what will happen when uh, the user will choose, you know, the Caesar? So, Let's wait here the completion. So, all right, we have the the rounds plus one, and we have uh, the same uh, you know verification in terms of comparison to see uh, who will win or not during the the round. So, I think it looks good, but it's just this what we expect in this game, Rene. Well, the thing is, what if they don't put in scissors, paper, or rock? What, what are we going to do in that case? Because like at the moment, it's just going to not do anything, I guess. So we might want to have some sort of like error message or say something. Potentially, they if they're not entering those things, they want to finish the game and they want to get out or they just like made a typo. Yeah, so, so let me put it here. Uh, if the there user enters something other than, you know, rock, paper, or scissor, because this is important, you know, to have uh, a prompt message for everyone. This is like an application. If you go like for a, a bank, and then, you know, you think, oh, I needed to transfer some money for someone. And, you know, you don't have the, the correct um, permission there or you don't have, you know, uh, funds, etc. We need, you know, uh, have a clear message on when we are doing something not correctly exactly. Uh, but OK, he, here our copilot is just uh, helping us to check. Also, I think something important is about uh, ask if the players want to keep, you know, to the second round because, you know, in my case, uh, sometimes I'm looking to win one round, but not all the time. And maybe the, the loser will be, you know, a bit tired and we need to ask if he wants to uh, keep playing, you know. Oh, look here. So ask the loser if they want to uh, clip. So let's see here, we are going to have uh, the message and uh, also we need to think how we can um, understand the user answer for us to see, oh, need to be uh, restarting the loop or if I go to quit, you know, the, the game. Yeah. So here we go. It's got the it's got the comments, got a lot of comments for us. Yes, uh, lots yes. of comments. So let's just me remove here uh, there we some go. stuff. Yeah, just break and else, else. Uh, we are going just to print, you know, the the information for them to say how many uh, wins or lose you have during the competition and also how many rounds we are playing here, right? Uh, do you need something else? I think, well, we, we've got that, so we're going to continue back around the loop uh, with that one. Um, but as it is, it's going to continue as we've got that loop that keeps going around forever anyway. Uh, so is yeah. there anything else we need for our game specifications that I'm missing? 
Uh, yes, I think it's got hair. Yeah. Oh yes. We do need to print. Uh, yeah. Do we want to have yeah? Who wins at the end? Because uh, if we're saying no, we're not playing anymore. We might want to before we break. We could potentially pr- yes, print out who just wins. Just continue here. Yes. And it basically, this is not a a, a very a uh, complex algorithm because basically the break and continue is is a kind of comments related with the while loop where we have here uh, in the beginning of our code. So just to check, you know, while true in this in the, this means that. Uh, if the user say yes, I want to keep you know executing the loop. Uh, they will keep you know showing the the message for us, and if no, they will just you know close the loop and then uh, print the message for us. Right, Hene? Absolutely. So yeah, we've got the break in the if no option, and then the else in the uh and the other option. So uh, either way, like we will get the continue, but it's sometimes nice to have that like giving in the code what the two options are because it will default to continue in this case because of the ordering but depending on how you generate your copilot uh, code in what order you might want to have the continue first and then the break so it's good to have both options written right there yes let's test that application let's see if it uh, works yes let's give it a go yes let Please. me go here just with python yes it's running. Yes, it's running. So let me see here if I will be lucky. Let me put it here. Uh, rock, I lose. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> okay, rounds. Yes, uh, let me think here. I will go with rock again. I lose again. <laughs> so, yes, Do uh, again. This is a- I, I don't know, maybe <laughs> Copilot is not helping me. So let me um, think. I will uh, keep playing and uh, let's put paper uh, as an option for okay, me. Okay, better. As, okay, I'm going. So uh, let me see here uh, which more I can do. Um, I don't know, I will put something uh, else. So, and it's breaking. So I need to think more about, so, okay. Uh, what you can uh, have uh, as a learning. So here, so basically we have a GitHub Copilot uh, helping us to understand, you know, the uh, environment and helping us to understand, you know, the interaction in the game. So I want to learn from you, Hene. Why do you think about the usability of a uh, GitHub Copilot in our daily basis? Because as uh, we already shared in the beginning of the session, so GitHub Copilot have the free tier uh, during the 30 days of trial. It's too Students can take um, the service for free when they have, a, you know, a connection with a technical college or university. But uh, if I'm not studying and uh, I really have my uh, trial done, so do you think uh, make a sense for for developers uh, use Copilot in the daily basis? Absolutely. Um, it's just super speedy. And like maybe you're a Python pro and you're like, oh, I don't really need it for my Python code, but it does make your life a lot faster. Even if you're just writing the code you want to write and it just auto completes the lines for you, that's just a time saver right there. Uh, but also when you're writing languages that you use less often, for instance, when I'm writing CSS, when I'm doing web development, I can never remember like whether it's, you know, uh, width, height, uh, you know, the order of the parameters or the exact name of the different, uh, you know, specifications you can make around CSS. So having the ability to just say, make all the borders green with three pixel widths or something like that um, is really easy. And you're like, okay, yes, that's right. I remember now, but it means you don't have to remember every single thing and you don't have to go and search for everything and then bring it across. It's kind of like a search that's built in with all the smarts that you've already put in your code. So it's 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 search with context um, to make your code better. So I would definitely recommend uh, giving you to go to speed up your whole life. Yes, yes. I think this is a, it's a very important uh, mindset because, you know, uh, sometimes people think that uh, Oh, AI will replace me, but AI will not replace you, but it will help you to grow. So I think that uh, it's, a, it's a very important. So I have a many uh, friends from different uh, markets, especially from uh, finance uh, startups or health startups where they need, you know, leverage a lot of um 
uh, APIs or services we have in the market to try, you know, improve the process of onboarding a new customer or promote, you know, some uh, application to help them to get access for private information, etc. Uh, and sometimes this kind of assisting will not have, you know, the very latest technology available there. And you need to go for, I don't know, five or 10 years old code to be, you know, uh, improving or connecting with a new service. And a uh, co-pilot can help you to understand what is happening uh, in the code as well. Also, we have a um, co-pilot here available as a prompt inside the, the VS code. And also, we have the GitHub co-pilot chat uh, where you can just interact like a GPT uh, style where, you know, we can start to interact uh, and you understand what is happening. So I think this is something that uh, is really good also. Uh, okay, so what do you have more here in terms of learnings? So basically, uh, if you want to uh, test this uh, challenge project and you understand, you know, that the building of this solution, uh, something important to say that a copilot will not create the same answer for you. That's why in the beginning I was asking uh, Renee, oh, how I can write this message or how I can, you know, define how this will work during my code because uh, every time according, you know, the, the message and the problem case is, is the comment you are putting here, uh, they will uh, create uh, some suggestion for you. And I think it is something really important because sometimes people don't feel like 100% comfortable or safe to say, Oh, I'm mean, going to include an AI, um, you know, a feature here uh, in my developer environment, and then AI will check all my code and then share with everyone. No, this is not happening. Everything that a uh, GitHub Copilot know about Cody come from uh, many research from the market or open uh, repos on the internet, uh, you know, to understand how the algorithms is working. And when you start to interact with Copilot inside your code to, you know, to maybe code something in your uh, own project or you already have a, something happening or created something new like us today, uh, Copilot will help you uh, very, very, very aligned with the exactly experience we you are connecting so also uh let me see here we have a question from the chat so i will uh, just more few minutes for us just to discuss uh, about this and we are going to back towards slides to share uh, more research and more guidance for you let me see here the question is tell about the the program uh that let me see here yeah. tell the program so, to choose before the user so yeah, this is a question I think about like, well, if the computer gets to choose after the user, will the computer know what the user's chosen? And so when the program runs, so Copilot's helping us to write the Python code, but once we hit run, the Copilot's not in the picture anymore. And it's just operating just as a computer does. And it just follows the instructions very exactly. So we've asked the user to enter something um, and then we are having the uh, computer also randomly choose something from the list of the three options. So it's not going to be based on what the, the human has entered already. So we don't need to worry about that very much. Uh, well, we don't need to worry about it at all because it just, as a computer does, does exactly what it's told and it's not going to be influenced by what's already been entered by the human. Great, thank you, Henny. So let me just back to uh, our slides just to uh you know to recap uh everything we did so first we have the the setup uh essential so i don't know if you want to uh talk a little bit about this yeah so these were just how to get set up uh so as we go through them first we had to fork the repo template um and then we needed to create code space on main which we just did by clicking that green button then we added the github copilot extension section in the uh, in the extension section of the dev container.json file, and then we rebuild the code space. Um, so if you missed how to rebuild the code space, you will have a box that pops up in the bottom right hand corner that says, do you want to, I see you've made a change to the uh, developer like specifications for the environment, do you want to rebuild? If you hit rebuild, that will rebuild, that will rebuild it. But if you've missed that box, which I did when I made the demo, because it can be, you know, 
can go away a bit too fast um, some of the time. Uh, then you can just do Control Shift P, or if you can do Command Shift P on your if you're on a Mac, and then you can just search for the code spaces options that come up in the uh, options palette that comes up there. So if you just write code space, and then you'll see something that has rebuild. Then you just click rebuild, and you'll rebuild the code space with that option uh, with the copilot mm. extension added to it and you'll be ready to go and that's what we did to get ready yes nice and also uh code space will ask to rebuild every time when you do a change in the dev container so and if you are like me that uh, you want you know to include some extensions to put some uh custom icons or, or everything different so you are going to do that and also in the second uh, exercise we just created all the the logic around the the code so and it, as you saw it, this uh was really a uh, simple because we are going to interact and especially um, in points where uh, GitHub Copilot understand that we did something different, and here we can connect with the example of the the round variable where uh, we just solved the first option where a Copilot help us to create a code to check if the the player choose some uh, option there. I don't remember if it was uh, rock or, or paper or scissor, but when we just back in the code and include a new instruction there to say, oh, I need to count these information here uh copilot are really learning this configuration or this you know uh decided to be uh including uh in the code uh, and also, I think we uh, are really talk uh, a little bit about Copilot and how it works. Also, I uh, want to just uh, recap about the invitation to join the GitHub Universe Cloud Skills Challenge because we have one of the, the 80 trainings we have uh, for free lab. Um, we have one special training about GitHub Copilot where we are going to talk not only about, you know, uh, the tools or the way we have uh, to interact with GitHub Copilot, even on the chat or even, you know, in the prompt, but I also talk a little bit about prompt engineering, basically help you to understand how you can communicate, you know, with the best approach possible to make the AI help you to create the code. And I, I think in, in this point, uh, interact with a uh, co-pilot assistant, not only here in the developer side, but uh, even, you know, in the Bing shed or, or anything else where we have a co-pilot available and we, need, we have the situation to be interacting with the AI, we need to have a very uh, offline skills called communication, clear communication. Sometimes this we can understand as a soft skills, maybe, because if you know, if you exercise, you articulate what you need, uh, this is exactly the thing that you need to just get from your life to put it in the code to be a uh, leverage the best uh, possibilities you have with Copilot. Uh, and now we have our knowledge check. Let's see if everyone here uh, was, you know, uh, doing with us the code to understand uh, the challenge we have and especially how the, the, the tools we are using today help us to create the solution. So let me see here the first question. This is a very interesting question because we have been discussing uh, in the beginning how uh, you know create a, like a multiplayer game. But let's see here the the question. Python has several modules to create an application. It looks like jQuery in the past when you think about JavaScript, so I think that's funny. Uh, what was the function of the random module in your mini game? And basically, we have here uh, three options. The first one, create uh, a list of options. Second, be the user's opponent. Or third, calculate the score of the game. If you want to interact with us, please uh, scan the QR code here in the screen. Uh, you are going to access our pool uh, platform and then you can put your option there. So we are going to put here uh, some time for you uh, to join the, the knowledge check with us. So it will be very funny. Let me see here. I'm seeing uh, some more answers. Wow, everyone is, is connected with us, so it looks very good. 
I just yeah, comment, sure. uh, Renee, about the, the Python modules because uh, I was front-end developer for a long time mm. and I, I just remember the jQuery uh, library. I, I don't know if you already work with jQuery. So oh, bit, today, yeah, yeah today is, is not so funny because we have, you know, React or Vue or many other possibilities to create stuff in the web. But uh, uh, in the past, jQuery was like, you know, a lifesaver all the time to make everyone in the web. Absolutely. But it's also like when you're not familiar with jQuery, like you got to like figure it out. So having Copilot on hand would be super like having been done a bit of front end and only a bit of jQuery kind of like when it was like kind of not getting phased out, like because it's still active, but like there's more stuff coming in. So there's so many things to learn. So I think having Copilot on hand to learn that stuff is really, really handy. Uh, so, yeah. We we love to yeah. have it here. Uh, should we take a look at the uh, answers? Yes. Let me just put it here more. Uh, only more five seconds. Oh yes, five more seconds. Yes. There we go. There's the answer. Who's our opponent? So we do have fifty. More than fifty percent of people have said that that to be the users component. Uh, so we did have a lot of votes also for a uh to. Uh, create a list of options and we didn't create the list of options with random we did use the list of options when we called the random function to say hey here's a list of things that you can choose from random so it is does definitely involve the list of options but we're using Perfect. random to choose nice let's go to the Ooh, second question one. fantastic this one is what is the function of the lower method a put the user's option in lowercase B, calculate the score of the game. C, create a list of options for the user to choose from. Mm. Okay. Again, the, the, the front end developer inside me is thinking about CSS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Let's absolutely. To answer one of the questions we had in the chat while we're waiting for some answers, uh, will Copilot help you refactor ug ugly code? Um, and I think I haven't given the Copilot chat feature a go yet, but I think when we're working in the file with Copilot, it will help us with the specific things around us, but it won't look at the whole file and make a major change. It will just add things to it. But maybe with Copilot chat, we'll be able to yeah. address more of the whole file. Um, and that I think also Copilot is handy to have on hand because it does actually teach you better programming practices in terms of like the structure of code and what it should look like. As when we you know, generated the big chunks of code, it was able to show us like a whole section. You can see, oh yes, we want to have if and several elifs, for instance, if you're coming new to Python. Nice. So let's put it here just more of uh, five, five seconds. So I think when I saw um, when I said about the front end development, lots of people started to put it here in the first option, put the user option in the lower case, like at the CSS comment there, we can put, you know, uh, everyone. We actually don't include the, the lower in our um, algorithm, but uh, basically this is just like, uh, uh, you know, dealing with the, um, the options and the user input. So we can put this validation there. And let's see the 30 question. What is the function of input methodology? So let's see here first. Put the user option in lowercase, calculate the score of the game, or get the user input. Let's see. Options. Let's see here. Yes, I'm looking yes. here the, the option. So have we got votes coming in? We've got a few votes coming in. I've got a lot of votes coming in. People are speedy. People are being very speedy today, um, yeah. which is exciting to see. Thank you, everyone, for getting involved in the chat as well as with the voting for the options. Uh, shall we give it five more seconds, Cynthia? Yes, I think everyone is very uh, quick for this question. So let's see the answer. 
Yes, is to yes. get the user input. Basically, uh, let's just back uh, in the basis and in thinking about the communication of the information or anything we have in tech. Basically, we have the input and the output. And here we can think that uh, the input is getting everything that uh, we just, you know, type in the terminal and the output is represented by the print function in your uh, Python code. So basically, this is the this is the analogy to our answer and let's go to our last question Renee. Yes and our last question is what is the function of the break method? A create a repetitive structure, B calculate the score of the game or C end a repetitive structure. So get your votes in the chat. They're coming yes. in quickly as well. Uh, yes. Everyone is on fire so I saw many uh, answers absolutely that's yeah so we had break come in when we were near the end of coding our uh, game so yeah that was near the end of our yeah. looping structure there so uh still i we'll think get, we get can put it the, the five seconds do you right because i reckon everyone is the, the same option they're so loving it say. they've got this <laughs> they've got this yeah 100% of the votes for end a repetitive structure. So that's exiting a loop. So if you have an if state, if you have a break statement inside a loop, it will end exit the innermost loop and get you out of that that rep repetition structure right there. Yeah. So those Perfect. are all of our knowledge check questions. Uh, so I guess we've only got a couple of minutes. So let's wrap up the show with a summary of what we've done. Uh, so what we did today, we made our Python mini game using GitHub Copilot. We didn't write a lot of Python ourselves. Uh, Copilot did a lot of the work for us. I love writing Python, but I guess I love having a thing that works more. And you, this is a pretty simple game, so it was able to do a lot of the lifting for us. But we did have to have some good prompts and we did have to have the lo logic of the structures that we wanted to have in terms of like the specifications we had in mind and how we wanted that game to flow to get Copilot to help us uh, with that. And we did, did that all inside code spaces as well, where we added our Copilot extension. Uh, so we've got our extra resources link there again, and there'll be another slide coming up on that in a second as well. Um, but yeah. yeah. Uh, here, be oh, I think it just is just a recap about the GitHub Universe uh, Cloud Skills Challenge. So, uh, also the link we for um, tech blog, so you can go there and check the about the the challenge and how we can uh, join the the opportunity and get your digital badge. Uh, let's move here very quickly to our yes. uh, ad services yes, because yes, this yes, is yes. really important, right, Hene? Absolutely. So we've put together a blog with you'll have be able to get the on demand video of this if you want to watch it again and do it again, you know, alongside it. We've also got the Cloud Skills Challenge for this uh, session, as well as more information on the GitHub Universe Cloud Skills Challenge, the blog you can link to and read about there and jump into that Cloud Skills Challenge. So two challenges there, as well as there's some more videos and things about getting started with Git. Uh, Git, um, collaborating teams with Git, and also other GitHub tools. Uh, so uh, we've got, yeah, upcoming sessions Cynthia's got on uh, AI and GitHub tools and things coming up. And yeah, there'll be some more blogs linked to there next week on how you can use GitHub Copilot, Code Spaces, GitHub Actions, GitHub Templates all together as a project. Um, and also we've got links and programs for everyone, really students, educators, developers, founders, they're all there. Take a look at what you can get for free, what Microsoft can help you out with. So definitely give this link a look. Uh, yeah, because there's lots of good stuff we put together for us. Yes, I, I think this is a very cool. And also, I think well, everyone I really understand that we love Cloud Skills Challenge, right, Renee? Because this is a way for us, you know, to provide uh, a very curated learning path for everyone to see what is happening in the industry and how you can, you know, have the experience on practicing using the Microsoft and GitHub technologies. Also, I want to challenge everyone here in the session if you are here live or watching the um, the recording 
please go to the GitHub Cloud Skills Challenge or just check the, the blog where we have with all the resources for you and try replicate this same challenge project in your end and connect with us on, on LinkedIn or Twitter to share, you know, your experience because uh, we are looking to hear from the community what they want to learn or what is the best or not in terms of technology uh, to be able to help everyone to learn more and especially achieve more using the Microsoft and GitHub technologies. So I think we have like less than one minute right now. And uh, I just want yeah. to recap say thank you very much for joining us today. Lene and all the team here was a pleasure to be all of you. And especially this is a girl power team. So yeah, super happy to be with Absolutely. all of you today. And hope to uh, see uh, you in your next sessions. Yeah, there's another session coming up in 15 minutes. So do jump along to see automated deployment of SAP on Azure. 15 minutes from now, you can use these links. And to answer one last question, how do we both get so cool? Uh, you can check out our link trees, which are also in the blog, um, to see more about us and connect with us. But hope to see you at the next Learn Live session. Thank you all so much. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.